The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. We start out the show looking at the DAX and the FTSE. Both of those have uh, sort of rolled over. I've also posted a chart from one of our uh, subscribers that sent in a picture of his soybean farm down in Virginia. Looking good. It sure is beautiful, that's for sure. Folks, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, Forrest Gump. Let's take a look here at the uh, price of the NASDAQ because this NASDAQ is being influenced by a stock called Apple. And if you remember, when Forrest Gump was talking, he said, I've never been very good with finances, but Captain Dan, he bought me into this fruit juice company, and it's doing pretty good, I guess. Well, folks, that fruit juice company was Apple, and uh, it was equivalent to a dollar a share. I went back and looked just for the heck of it. So he's made 477 times his money, and this is one stock that will absolutely never go down. We are seeing some divergences again because the S&P could only make a just about a 61% retracement back, and uh, the same thing in the NASDAQ. They went slightly above it. But uh, that's neither here nor there. They went slightly above it just to, to get my stop right on the absolute high. But I'm still in a good mood, so no problem. Take a look at it. I want you to see what happened. This is what we were saying is watch for that first ABCD correction. And we did get it. But then we went up and we hit a high of uh, 27 uh, 782 last night. So it just uh, was a hair's breath. And of course, we've come down since. But there'll be many of opportunities as we look at this. But I wanted to go through a couple of things that I think are very, very important. One is the fact that I think, and I think since we're down two handles on the euro, uh, that tells us that that uh, low that we've been watching in the dollar index most probably could be a very, very important low. And I wanted to share with you something from Jim Cramer that someone sent to us today. Uh, I, I know Jim. I actually like the guy. He's actually a really friendly fellow and tremendously uh, philanthropic. Uh, he is a, he's a nice guy. But here was, here's a picture of him on the show, and it's from something from our good friend Larry Williams. And I wanted to bring it up to show you that what he's looking at here is the fact that the big commercials are net short the dollar. You see that? They are net short the dollar in here. So uh, that means that we are at a very, very incredibly important spot here. Remember that number in the 61% the retracement on the long-term weekly is at the price of um, 91.63. We came within about 40 pips of that net long. Sorry, Marshall, you're absolutely correct. Ta-da! I meant net long, not net short. Thank you, Marshall. You always got my back. Appreciate it. So we got this. there's a really good possibility that we could be making a major turn in here. So let's sort of uh, keep our eyes and ears open. Okay, that's what we want to be watching with the U.S. dollar. We'll be following it closely like we always do. But we're down 200 handles from, well, 200 points in the euro. So uh, that, that in itself is very important. And I, I think uh, we're starting to see some signs that, yes, this might uh, possibly uh, be it. Okay, the next we want to cop copy uh, talk about here is the Bradley model a little bit. Uh, get a little uh, section up here for one section here. Put this in. This is what we were looking for in the Bradley model. Uh, we went up. Uh, we made a much, much higher high in the NASDAQ, as you can see. We ex went way past the 1.27 last night uh, and yesterday with Apple going crazy. And of course, it reversed a little bit, but really nothing much to uh, even, not even tra – well, it's tradable, of course, but it wasn't much to even send home about it in, in a card or a newsletter for sure. All right, now let's move on and take a look at what happened uh, last year, uh, going back to 2016, I want to bring this to your attention because this, this brings back a lot of memories for me. You'll notice on the very left over there, that was election night when the Dow Jones was limit down. And then it, it, it was almost unchanged by the end of the night when it was found out that uh, there was a surprise in the election. 
And then you can see we went all the way up to 2018 in January. That was a high. We had a high in June. These these are the highs are pretty good, folks. You got to pay attention to it for when it works. The reason why I'm saying this, boys and girls, is the fact that the one that we're looking at like that looks very similar to something else that happened a long, long time ago, like maybe uh, 11 years ago. And I'll bring this up here. And if you're this is I I had been with uh, TFNN only about a year and a half, and I put this. So this was the Bradley model in red. And I said that this is going to be the strongest uh, short covering rally that the stock market has ever seen. And it would exceed the short covering rally of 1938. Well, that's how little I know, because what happened was this thing is still going up and we're 11 years into it. Here's what I want to focus on. Let me blow this up so you can see it just a little bit better. And this is an I, I would. Oh, guys, did I remember this? I want to put this up here. Still going. You're absolutely right. You'll notice here at the bottom, you'll see the very bottom there where the red arrow is and the green arrow is. You notice there's a double bottom there. Okay, you, after that first bottom, we had a really strong rally in the S&P, about 30, I think it was about 35 or 40 points, which was used. I had my largest position I ever had at that point. And I was looking for something like that to happen. But that double bottom came down and reduced my position by about 90%. And it shook me up a lot. And uh, so I don't know if this is what's happening this time with it, but you got to pay attention to this thing. It don't work all the time, but when it works, golly gee, it really works. So let's uh, let's remind ourselves that uh, it's only probabilities that we're dealing with here, but uh, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, I wanted to ask some of the someone asked a question about astrology. I don't, you know, I don't really get into it too much, folks, because I, I I focus on, you know, what are the patterns that I'm looking at. You know, I try to look at new moons and full moons and stuff like that in the Bradley model, something like that. But you really got to look at the patterns. You know, that's really what you know keeps me from going absolutely bonkers. That's for sure. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that's something that I think we should pay uh, close attention to. All right, now let's ask another question that someone was asking, and that was about the uh, the. Uh, hold on one second. Where is that puppy? Oh, this was about the gold yesterday. Let's get this gold up here. Uh, we wanted to bring this to your attention because it's acting pretty much the way we uh, hoped it would. You notice here that we had not had a 382 retracement here uh, over the uh, over the two day period between the uh, 19th and the 21st. We could only get up. To 1962. This morning we came all the way down to uh, 1916. We missed the number we were looking for. We wanted to be a buyer around 1908. We still might get there. We don't know, but we've been able to rally from uh, 1916 all the way up to 1948. And that brings us to the question that someone brought to our attention this morning. And Hector was saying, you posted a chart on gold the other day, and I wanted to understand what that was. This was the type of chart that I posted, Hector, and I'll explain to you what it is. It is an artificial intelligence program, a neural network that predicts where the highs and lows should be and what the trend should be for a market. But we'll cover that when we get back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've uh, posted the uh, results of what happened yesterday after we had that sell-off in the gold market. We went right down to the 61% uh, uh, retracement there at 932. We had a nice turn, and we went all the way up to 963. And if you did the math on that, you'll see that you were looking at, you'll never guess, $32, the harmonic number in gold. So this morning we've had this uh, projected uh, pattern that we were looking at and all I'm going to do now is to update where we are today with the uh, that particular pattern and you'll see it here again we've done exactly the same thing we went from 1916 up to 1948 and if you do the math it's $32 and that is the harmonic number in gold I, I was introduced to this way back in the early 90s uh, from Bakersfield California by a gentleman by name of Dennis Reagan Dennis Regan was the brains behind the Tomahawk Warhead missile. He had pictures of his uh, achievements in his office. Uh, he lived a very Spartan life with his uh, Japanese wife that could not speak English and his two small children. He was definitely an, uh, a genius. He could speak like seven uh, languages fluently. And uh, it was really, uh, it was hard for me to grasp working with him, but it worked okay. And Unfortunately, he died too early, but I've spent the last 20 some years uh, trying to get it automated and I've never been able to do it. I've had people tell me, oh, yeah, it's a piece of cake to do it. And after a year or two and three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, they never had anything done right. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it works, oh, my goodness, it works awfully good. And that's the thing that you have to remember to follow the winners and let that the ones that are not working, you know, just let those you know, let those pass away. So I hope that helps, Hector. Um, I wrote a book called Artificial Intelligence, and I never did publish this because I didn't want uh, people to understand, you know, the kind of stuff I was doing because, A, I didn't understand it all. I just wrote the history of it. And if you're interested in that, Hector, you know, let me know, and uh, you can uh, get that through uh, – through the website. Oh, th well, through me anyway. Okay, let's move on here to talk more about the market. Uh, I, I believe uh, today is a Friday. Now, if that's not a lot of information, I'll try to be more specific. This will be followed tomorrow by Saturday. The important thing is we're Friday in an up week. 
And uh, if we close lower, which the Dow Jones could certainly do that and the S&P, but the NASDAQ doesn't necessarily have to close lower because of the fact that Apple is in there. And Apple, when you look at Apple being, you know, let me show you how weak the stock market was yesterday in the Dow Jones, folks. The Dow Jones closed up 46 points at the close, all right? Apple was up 10 points. You know, the, <laughs> just, just because of that, uh, the Dow Jones should have been up 150. But it was the other stocks in the Dow that were pulling it down, and now you're starting to see that's the reason behind it because of the sell-off that we had last night and starting early this morning. So those are just a few of the things that you've got to keep in mind when you're watching this. Uh, uh, yes, everything. I am, I am okay. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, the problem is, folks, I have this uh, these two Palo Verde trees that are here on, uh, in our, on at the house here in Tucson, and they are constantly in bloom. And we had this tremendous rains in the last two or three days, and they they've really blossomed. What it does is I'm I'm allergic to those puppies, and there's not much I can do other than take allergy pills. But if I take allergy pills, they make me a little bit sleepy. So what I have to do is to just suffer through it and uh, try not to talk too much. So I talk during the first hour of the day here, and then I try not to uh, talk too much, which uh, Sarah is very happy to hear that. So that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Now, the rest of these other markets like the uh, – Hold on, I want to I want to update uh, the fact of where we are with the a couple of these Fang stocks because I think it's important because of the fact that you know we're up we're up in an area where we should be we should be looking at uh, you know something that would be uh, uh, really what we call spectacular. So we want to see if uh, Microsoft went up and made a new high yet. Uh, no, it hasn't yet, but it's getting very very close. Get up here and take a look at it. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Bar Bear with me here just a minute here. Okay, there you you can see here that we, we still could get up to 220, 219, 220 in Microsoft. It's at two hey, we could go a lot higher than that too. I'm just saying that's one of the numbers up here. Look at Google, folks. It's come all the way back and making it a possible double top up in here. So these markets have not turned out. Even even Apple uh, is running and these are just being uh, Chased by Apple is my opinion, and we'll get Apple up here. We're trading at uh, 75 or 77, 76 uh, so far this morning, and we'll take a take a quick look. These are the stocks that are making the market move. It's not the other stocks. Ah, even 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 uh, even our friend Netflix finally uh, finally perked up and had a little bit of a rally after that 382 move. We're back up to that 61 percent retracement off of that. So. It's still in a minor downtrend, but not too much. And the final one, of course, uh, we got two more to go, Amazon and Facebook. And we'll get up here and you'll see that uh, Facebook is looking at possibility of a, uh, of a double top in here. But actually, the whole game, the whole game is uh, with the Apple folks. It's, I mean, they get more free press than, uh, than anything. So that's the main thing. The other amazing news is that they're only going to charge 5.5 million dollars for a 30 second commercial for the super bowl and because of the i've heard that because of the covid 19 they're only going to play one quarter of the super bowl instead of four quarters now that's known as fake news boys and girls i'm just trying to alert you to the fact that it happens everywhere even at tfnn all right let's move on here i want to get to a couple of things questions that other people have had uh, one of the questions is about the Bradley model, and I don't know the, how to answer this, but how accurate is it? Well, my guess overall, uh, and looking at these for, since 1885, it's around 75%. The trading dates are very, very good. They are definitely at 75%. And those are based on you know things like new moons, full moons, Mercury, Venus, all the other stuff. But when you have a bunch of them coming together like this with a you know a big... Uh, a big change, that's the one you have to pay attention to. And, you know, they don't always happen that way. But when you're at an area where, you know, things could happen, that's when you want to pay, you know, close attention to. So that's uh, something that I think is important. And also, if you remember, we talked a few days ago about the fact that these uh, the market for uh, Treasury bonds was looking uh, a little suspect. We've had our first... Uh, Okay, hold on. I'll talk about that when we get back. Bill, hold on one second here. 
Uh, you'll see here we, we got up to that 179.23 uh, level. That's the ABCD. It's taken uh, about uh, four days to get there. That is uh, not a very good pattern, folks. Uh, if we get above 180, uh, then it's uh, certainly wrong. But uh, right now, it looks like these Treasury bonds uh, are ready to uh, take another leg down. We had a nice move from 183 down to the 38% th level, came in at 178.14. We got as low as 177.16. So those are just a few of the things that we're you know, watching here this morning. So uh, there's a lot of things going on, as you can imagine. 877 -927. Larry Pezzavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I'm going to put the chart of Apple up here, and I've also put the artificial intelligence projection of what the Apple should do today. And as you can see, after the first hour of trading at 1030, you know, this is, uh, you know, it should have a possibility to the downside. Now, one of the things I'm going to be doing uh, when I do the live trading webinar on the uh, 26th next week, uh, hopefully, and uh, what I'm going to be doing is showing how I set this up. Now, what you have to do is this is a timing tool. It has nothing to do with price. In other words, it doesn't mean that the market's going to go from 478 
down to 473. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that trend between 1030 and uh, in the close is going to be one way. And if that's if that's the case, I, I would you know certainly be interested. And what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to be doing any more of these uh, live things because people don't seem to be interested in it. Because I had a little bit of a difficulty with Tom and Tommy because I wanted to guarantee the folks that they would make the money. Otherwise, we would uh, either refund them or do another webinar. Because when I do that, I I don't miss very often when I do that because I do so much work to prepare for it that if you're going to pay the $295, you're going to make $200. $95. I can't guarantee it, but I can certainly tell you you're going to have a really good shot. It's like having Secretariat running in a maiden claiming race, folks, because when, I, when I'm really well rested and prepare, like I have to do when I'm doing a full day thing like this, it's really quite exciting. And when doing a full day, you're going to get a lot of opportunities. And with the volatility that we're having now, there's always going to be something. The last one we did, we netted, I think, 1700 uh, dollars on the trades that we did. The only one that we had a loser in was uh, Twitter. We did a Twitter trade that we th lost about 40 cents in, but all the others, you know, lined up pretty good. So if you get a chance, you know, to to listen to it, I think you'll have, and you'll be, be able to watch it more than once, which is good. So you'll be able to get a lot of information out of it. So pay attention to around 10:30, 10:40. Actually, actually, the time could be from 1030 to 1130 to see this. What we'll do is on Monday, we'll, re, we'll view this. Be uh, uh, Someone's asking, what is the capital required? Uh, well, I, you know, these are day trade margins. So, you know, they're, you know, it's not very much. And day trading in these other things is not very much either. You know, day trade for corn is like $450. You know, beans is like 800 or 900. Wheat, we'll do some of those. But we'll keep a uh, we'll keep a close eye on it. Tesla hit 2060. My God, that's what gold hit the other day, almost at 2090. Wow, only unbelievable. By the way, folks, Tesla is a a uh, communications and data company. It's not an automobile company. Uh, John Jameson explained to me that's why this price is so high is because of the artificial intelligence that's in, included in that car. I don't know if you know this, but if you pass a Tesla on the road. Uh, the Tesla people, they, they transfer, I don't know how they do it, but they transfer that data into the Tesla and then it goes into the major data bank. So it's, it's telling you who the, you know, where they are, what kind of cars people are driving. And, and, uh, you know, I, I just got a lot of stuff in it way over this Cowboys pay grade. As Captain Dan would say, he never told me to buy anything from the fruit juice company, but who knows? And that's another thing, folks. In all these years I've been doing this, do you realize that I have never, and I, I mean, knock on wood, I have never gotten a trading tip that worked. Never. One time. Uh, all I mean, I've had people tell me some things, and, and none of them have ever. I mean, some of them might have happened, but they never said, you know, someone's you know, we're going to get a, a, a three hundred move, three hundred dollar move in lumber. I've never gotten a tip like that, and I guess that goes back to the Jesse Livermore books, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, because Jesse had that same uh, same uh, type of experience. But you got to do the work yourself, and uh, that's the main thing is you got to try to. You know, find out the simplest patterns that you can find and then, uh, you know, go with it. That's the main thing that you want to be looking at. Let's see if that gold uh, has come down, because if we get much above 1652 in the gold, we could have one heck of a run in the gold market. And we have been so far to we haven't gotten above that that real key level here of a 16 in 1949. And I believe if you get down to 1936 in the gold, pay pay close attention to it, folks, if we get there, because you're going to have a real interesting spot here, you know, to take a look at it. Now, the Treasury bonds have just moved down about a half a point from that level we were looking at. They're trading at 179.15. Something something has happened in Treasury bonds, folks. The the I don't know what it is, but you'll know, you just remember it. Let's we, we talked about this yesterday because it's very important. You'll notice here, after the top we made here, we, we, you see where it says strong resistance there? You know what that means, folks? That means strong resistance. Is it, what did it do? It goes up and touches those numbers and turns right back down again. And then we, we break for eight days and we rally for five days. And we didn't make the 382 retracement until today, which is the sixth day. That is not very bullish. Just to take the opposite side of that and just turn it around, 
Go back to the bottom back in February, and you'll see the bottom in January, and the market goes up and pulls back to the 382, where it says key support. Well, that's what that means, key support. So uh, that this all we're doing is numbers, and what we do on that, you know, the, during the day of the uh, of the of the all day seminar, I try to show you how to find these, how to use them, and uh, we ask all kinds of questions, which is really good. And but it's uh, it's an intense six hours, and I promise you, you will get your money's worth. Uh, that's for sure. I, I would, you know, what I was going to do is I've got a I've got a library of so many books. I mean, they're they're everywhere, and I was going to give a book to everybody that uh, that signed up uh, to the thing because I've got to start liquidating them someday. And uh, but anyway, I I really I really have a tremendous library. Thank God. Uh, for the deal that I made when I was with Drexel Burnham, uh, and I, I was sitting there uh, in, in the uh, Beverly Hills Country Club, and they asked me what I wanted, and I said I'd like to have an education fund, and uh, they told me, says, well, we know what you're going to be able to do, so whatever you able, whatever you want, we'll be able to give for, get it for you, and and they they held that all the time. Whenever I wanted to buy anything, didn't make any difference, one thousand, two thousand, five thousand. And I spent a lot of money with Larry Williams because his work was really spectacular because back in those days, there was very few people that did anything. And he had a computer and a computer programmer that did a lot of great stuff. And I've certainly got my money's worth out of that. But uh, I was going to give a book away, but then I stopped. Oh, then I got to send the darn thing out and all the other stuff. And I then I had to figure out what, what, what subject did they want because I've got every – every conceivable subject in the world. So I decided maybe not to do that. But you will get your money's worth that much, I can absolutely guarantee. And I think we'll make a couple of bucks, which is uh, hopefully. we got to pay attention now, folks, because if we get below the 177 level in the uh, Treasury bond, something is wrong with what the what the Treasury Department and the, uh, the what are those federal federales are telling us, uh, Jerome Powell, something is wrong. Yes, I'm going to, uh, Jerome. One of the things I'm going to be doing on the uh, is to go over harmonic numbers because they're very important. That's what happened in the gold today. You see, we went from 18, we went from 1916 up to 1948. That's 32 dollars. That's the harmonic number in gold. The harmonic number in the uh, Treasury bonds is 22 ticks. And so you 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 add those to it. It helps you determine you know what your risk is and where your top your profit objectives are, along with the fact that when you add A, B, C, Ds to it, it gives you a better idea of where these exact prices are. And since we'll be looking at about four or five trades, and you know, and we, we'll we'll be we'll be right by eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to uh, bring to your attention here this gold market. We went up, and you see we hit the uh, 32 bucks up. And what do we do? We came in down 12. We stopped at uh, 1935. And you'll never guess what 1935 was. If you like Fibonacci numbers, it was 0.382 exactly at the time. Now, the one thing I am going to share with you, uh, if you come to the uh, thing, is something I haven't shared before in books or talking or anything. And I'm going to show you the basic theory of why the AI works. And it is something that is so simple that it'll just knock your socks off. Folks, it's nothing more than a vibration in time. Instead of looking at the price axis, it looks at the time axis. And the reason why it was important is when the Tomahawk missile was fired out of the submarine, it took it, it goes straight up, and it doesn't know where it's going until it gets away from the um, Tomahawk, from the submarine, by at least a mile. And then once it's a mile above, it kicks in and it starts to search for things that are in the uh, environment that tells it it's going in the right direction. In other words, they point it northwest, east, or south, or whatever, and then as it gets closer, it takes flash pictures of what's out there in the horizon. And as it starts to come down, it begins to, it can differentiate between a pharmaceutical factory and a munitions factory and a hospital and all those things. And that's what was so amazing about it. And it was all based on time. And he figured it out it had something to do with the market. It's, it's the key to the market, but the problem is, like anything else, it only works part of the time. Now, if we get below 18, excuse me, 1930 in the gold, this would certainly be wrong. But right now, it's lining up absolutely perfectly. But I will show. Uh, we'll show you how to do that real simple thing that will uh, do it. The reason why I don't mind doing it because most people won't follow through and really learn anything about it. Here's where we were last night in the gold market when we were way up here. I was uh, watching it. Uh, for We were looking for a big break to occur. You can see here. And you'll notice that you see where the red line stops at 1941. has nothing to do with price, folks. It has to do with time. It, it's all it is. It's just a timing signal that when it works, it works really good. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. So that, And that, it is pretty accurate. It's better than 70%. So, uh, okay. Uh, well, someone's, uh, Terry's asking, how did that aspirin factory get hit then? I don't know what kind of mechanism they were using. And sometimes everything fails. I don't know. But that's how that thing works. And uh, it's done a pretty good job. Okay, let's move. If you remember, remember in nine, nine, uh, 1991 when the uh, Navy SEALs went in on the new moon uh, on January and they planted those lasers at the uh, munitions and the, the bad places in uh, Baghdad. And then at 4 o'clock in the afternoon when it was midnight over there, uh, you know, the bombers lit it up. That's because those laser, laser things were set there. All they had to do was to follow what that laser was. And that's that's how it 
that's how it works. And uh, I don't know. Hey, look, you, you <laughs> I'm just glad microwave ovens work. I wasn't even sure they were going to work. I'm still not sure about color TVs, but microwave ovens, I think they're here to stay. Okay, I wanted to share with you uh, a little bit more about that bond because, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk, you know, about zero interest rates. And if that, let's get the bond back up again because it's that important. Now, if this market reverses, and it certainly could at any time, and we get above the 180, then that's a game changer. But right now, this market's in big trouble. And uh, if it doesn't uh, get moving very quickly, you know, you're going to be able to see that uh, there's a little bit of a problem. Since we're talking about the Treasury bonds, let's just take a quick look here at what we were looking for this morning. Just give me one second here, and we'll see what uh, what our because this was, uh, yeah, this one's acting, well, not too bad. So let's get this up. Here's what we were looking for in the uh, Treasury bond market. You'll get this up here and see here where we are. You'll notice uh, the high was at uh, 28. Our number was at 24. We're now trading at uh, 08. So it's made its first profit objective, but it's got a long way to go to see what's happened. Let's get back to something that we've been in, or we were in, and now we're, we're waiting for the pullback, and that's the natural gas. Uh, that's uh, one that I think has got really great long-term potential. As you remember, when we got up to that 61% retracement up there, that 245 level, we were suggesting there would be a nice correction. We've now come down about 15 handles. I think we're going to come down some more. So far, what we've done is done exactly what we did in early August when we went from 225 down to 210, 15 handles. What do we do this time? 15 handles. Again, it's the old story, rep repetition, repetition, repetition. So we're at major support here right now on a short-term basis because we're touching those old highs at 220, uh, 225, and the low so far today has been uh, two, uh, what is it, 220 something, yeah. 220, uh, 228, so within three points of that. So being a Friday, I wouldn't be doing anything, but I would be watching this thing coming in here on Monday, would be able to pay close attention to it to see uh, how that's going to work out. But those are just a few of the things that we're keeping close eye on. We're also watching the grains, folks, because remember, we hit some really strong resistance levels in the soybeans and corn and wheat and everything else and now we're in the midst of a, a little bit of consolidation and that that market still has the potential to have legs but uh, we we have to give it a little bit more time early next week we'll have a better remember we're in the we're in the midst of the of the end of the growing season now for soybeans you can see that farm that i posted here from virginia early this morning how beautiful it was well, that's because those puppies are ready to uh you know, ready to move. If they start turning brown because of heat or too much moisture, then there's a big problem. And there's usually three beans to the pod. And if they go from three beans to a pod to two beans to a pod, that's when you get those one and two dollar moves uh, in the soybeans. But so far, that has not happened. We're in the midst of finishing a 61 percent retracement up there, about 20 cents higher. And we're going to see what the retracement is on the downside here in the next day or two. So that's what we're paying attention to in that. And, of course, uh, the main takeaway, folks, we've only got a few more minutes for the rest of this week. The main thing is is the Bradley model may or may not work. We still don't know because there's a lot of divergence going on. We've got this move going in an Apple that is uh, really I – did, I did a little bit of work in the Apple on a, on a price basis, and uh, that told us that we were most probably – let's just get up here uh, – Okay, here's the first chance. To see, this is a uh, this is at the moment of truth now uh, in the in the gold, folks. We're right here at this uh, 35 level again, and uh, if you're if you're looking at it, it can't get below 32. So you have to risk four dollars. Well, you're talking about a contract that's worth 193,500 dollars, and uh, you know that's not uh, that's not a, a small piece of change. So you've got to be able to risk about 400 bucks. So if you get below 1931. You know, something would be certainly wrong with this, but that's exactly what's happened with it uh, so far. Let's take a quick uh, peek at Apple right before we get back, and then we, we want to double-check this because I think it's got a chance for maybe a turnaround uh, at that uh, 1030 time frame, which is coming in about a half an hour. Oh, it's acting perfectly. Let's just get this up here, and you'll be able to see it. And, uh, yep, there we go. We're in business here. Hold on with 
me boys and girls, and we'll be ready. Uh, you're showing at at 483. Wow, I uh, I'm only showing it at 480. What's going on here? 877-927-6648. Oh, I know why. in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018, and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, an essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. We're going to have a pretty wild swinging day. We've got the dollar is uh, moving very, very quickly. The euro got down to 117.67. That's exactly 200 points lower. Uh, we've got the gold setting its support here at 1932. Uh, anything below that is going to tell us that we're probably going to be heading down to much lower prices, which would be the ideal situation for a sold out the bull that's waiting to get back in. So we would like to see a bigger correction here to see. We we do trade these smaller ones like we had this morning when you have that big of a swing of uh, you know 32 bucks but you don't always get those intraday in gold you have been recently but that's that's very unusual but the volatility has increased uh, 
a great deal, which is good. By the way, if you, I, I know a few people that trade the uh, the micro or mini contracts in gold, and they've increased their volume quite a bit, and the fills have been superb, I've been told. Uh, Rich said he had one customer that does that exclusively because he trades without stops, and he feels better trading with the half-size contract. So that's what we're paying attention to. Uh, if we close really strongly today, uh, somewhere above the 33 uh, 90 area. We're trading at 33.84 now in the S&P. Uh, that would mean the Nasdaq would be screaming again at a new high ground, which it's probably already doing. Uh, let's well, I can't check it because there's too much time, not too much time left. But if we close above that 33.94 level, uh, it's going to have to top today in the Bradley model because with this type of a setup, it can't be wrong by more than two days. And that was Wednesday. This is Thursday. Today's Friday. That's two days. So this is it. This is where the pedal hits the metal or where the chicken lays the egg or everywhere you, the fox catches the goat, whatever it is. We'll have a uh, update, of course, of this on Monday when we look at some of these things. And we'll review this Apple chart that we're watching here. And we certainly want to keep an eye on this U.S. dollar. We want to get short to euro here uh, on any rally here over the next few days. So those are a few of the things that we want to be watching. Bonds are starting to work nicely. So if you're in that, just hang in there. And uh, that certainly had a nice move here uh, today. Makes up for that uh, S and uh, for the Dow Jones thing that just didn't quite work. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.